Earlier here at 5, we were awaiting the start of the confirmation hearing for Betsy DeVos. She is the Michigan native tapped by Donald Trump to be Secretary of Education. That hearing is now underway, and these are live pictures. Meantime, with three days until Donald Trump's inauguration, Vladimir Putin is stepping into the fray. Putin, who denies Russia hacked the U.S. election, says Trump is the real victim. Steve Hanelsman is at the White House tonight. Steve? In front of cameras here at the White House today, Barack Obama had a chance to respond to Putin's latest move, but instead the president just laughed and walked away without a word about Putin or Donald Trump. Mr. Trump, do we have a word? The president-elect got support from Moscow as he tried to build enthusiasm for his inauguration. With just 40% of Americans now polling positive about a Donald Trump presidency, enter Vladimir Putin again. Trump, alleging a political struggle in the U.S. to undermine the legitimacy of the president-elect, calling the leakers of unverified reports about Trump worse than prostitutes. CIA Director John Brennan insisted this is not intelligence community information. He called it repugnant for Trump to have likened U.S. intel officials to Nazis. Trump reignited his feud with Congressman John Lewis, who, alleging that Trump got help from Putin, called Trump's election illegitimate. Lewis saying he will boycott Friday, missing his first inauguration as a congressman. Wrong or lie, tweeted Trump. He boycotted Bush 43. Yes, Lewis had to admit, he did protest the Supreme Court deciding that election. We did not attend the first Bush inauguration. That, that is factual. Another fact, under pressure by Trump, General Motors announced plans to create or save 7,000 U.S. jobs. At Trump Tower was a chief of Boeing, pressured by the president-elect on Air Force One pricing. And I think Mr. Trump's engagement with industry is going to help us grow manufacturing jobs in this country. Trump bragged Americans are seeing big stuff. But they won't on Friday. The president-elect is paring back inauguration day celebrations to just a 90-minute parade and just three inaugural balls. At the White House, Steve Handelsman, Local 4. All right. Thank you, Steve. Millions will be attending the 58th presidential inauguration, and one of those people will be our very own Kimberly Gill. She will have live coverage from Washington, D.C., starting on Friday.